Starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everybody. We've got a huge crowd on the line. Clearly, this is a hot topic, how to get and keep your business slightly overstaffed. Um, lots of lots of threads and discussions online about this, uh, this great topic, um, <laughs> this great challenge. <laughs> Um, it, it, of course, means we have good business if we're struggling to get more people to, to serve all the clients. And we've got Tom Stewart, one of the largest uh, independent cleaning business owners in the U.S., uh, certainly in the Charleston area, uh, takes, takes uh, top awards. Um, Castle Keepers uh, of Charleston is his company. Um, I, am, uh, I am privileged. I'm CeCe Michael, by the way, privileged to work out of his offices. Um, he holds the ARCC Seal of Excellence. Uh, he's also uh, Castle Keepers is an IICRC certified firm, which means we have several um, nationally certified cleaning technicians in both house cleaning and carpet cleaning. Maybe a couple of other areas he might be able to add that in a bit. Um, he also is the first residential cleaning company and one of only two residential cleaning companies to hold the National Sims certified firm status. Uh, which is a management, um, uh, which is a management standard specifically for the cleaning industry. Um, so he's particularly proud of, of of that honor, and it's one of the reasons he is uh, is talking about getting and keeping your business slightly overstaffed because that is a management oh. issue. Um, he is also the publisher for CleaningBusinessToday.com, along with uh, his partner Derek Christian, um, and coaches through Cleaning Business Builders. He's got a lot here. <laughs> He's got a lot going on. Um, modern cleaning, chemical-free cleaning procedure pioneer, along with his wife, Janice, who uh, um, is a, a licensed, um, I'm sorry, you're going to have to correct me here, Tom. What's her credential? It's in medicine. Oh, she's a registered dietitian. Registered dietitian and worked in infection control, control policies and procedures. And that is the, uh, the, the uh, innovation she brings uh, together with him for the modern cleaning chemical free cleaning procedure an arcsy past president one of the earliest um, so he's been with arcsy for a long time and uh, uh, certainly worked very hard to put together the uh, very first summit that arcsy had at a convention last year uh, co-hosted uh, co with cleaning business today on uh, technology disruptive innovation um, so he's got his got his hands in a lot of areas, all towards professionalizing, uh, increasing the professionalism of the cleaning industry in the eyes of consumers. We all struggle with that, um, and that is why Tom is going to talk today about getting and keeping your business slightly overstaffed. A um, few housekeeping notes before I hand it over to him. We are recording this webinar and we'll post it as always to our YouTube channel. So please subscribe so you always get those notifications. Also, everyone is um, muted to make sure that there are no uh, auditory interruptions uh, for Tom so everybody can hear. Um, please use the question feature, uh, the question uh, segment in your toolbar to send questions at any time. Um, uh, for the most part, we'll probably save them for the Q&A uh, periods that he'll open up at, at different times. Um, but occasionally we, we do get some that are just, he, he's making no sense. <laughs> Let me know <laughs> and I'll stop and make him go back backwards. Um, so please, uh, as you have your questions, go ahead and send them in to us and, and we will organize them so that we have a really robust Q&A section. Um, uh, a little bit later in the webinar today. Um, I am going to now turn it over to Tom and ask him to get started because I know we're all waiting for this one. Wow, okay, thank you Cece. Um, thank you for the uh, introduction. Uh, as Cece mentioned, we're going to be talking about staffing today and, and, and techniques and, and um, processes that we can put in place to um, maximize the chance that we're going to have the uh, staffing levels that we need and ideally it's our philosophy that with a cleaning business the position you want to be in is to shoot for being slightly overstaffed and there's a uh, couple of reasons for that, several reasons for that. We'll uh, get into that uh, in, the, in the presentation, a little bit further in the presentation. We're going to talk about uh, some definitions, we're going to talk about when we need to hire, going to talk about what is it we're looking for when we're hiring. Are we looking for attitude or are we looking for, for skill sets? And we're going to explain that uh, 
attitude is uh, where you probably want to be putting uh, most of your emphasis. Um, you know, what are you looking for in attitude, getting the right fit, and once you hire the right person, what do you uh, need to do in order to uh, keep them motivated and engaged? Um, some definitions. Uh, perfectly staffed is uh, a day when uh, you've got exactly the right number of people and exactly the right number of jobs where every uh, cleaning technician has a full day and generates uh, their uh, goal revenue for the day and gets done at the appropriate uh, end time for the day. No, uh, no uh, late evenings, no jobs that you had to uh, take off the schedule because uh, you didn't have enough help or nobody you had to send home or had early days. That's perfectly staffed. And honestly, that's uh, more of a, of a concept than it is reality because uh, my experience having done this for, gee, I don't know, about 20 years, I guess, is that uh, at any one point in time, you always have too much of one thing and not enough of something else. And um, you, know, you have too many jobs, not enough people, or too many people, not enough jobs. So. Um, it's a, it's a concept, but uh, it, it's not a reality. And so, if you're going to be wrong, which side do you want to be wrong on? And uh, we uh, we train and, and, and we practice ourselves to shoot to be overstaffed. At Castle Keepers, we uh, like to be about two uh, two FTEs over, two full-time people. And if they're part-time, it would actually be more people, but the hours would, would 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 add up to be about maybe 16 hours a day over more than what we would need. And that gives us some flexibility when um, the the unexpected job pops up or the problems pop up during the day and it's everywhere from flat tires to barking dogs to you know, getting that phone call where uh, somebody's got a sick kid and has to leave early, whatever. Um, the big priority though, and, 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 and one of the real reasons for, for, for being overstaffed is it creates a, um, a sales culture that when you're understaffed, typically you get uh, a bit reluctant to, to put new business on the board and you start thinking of, well, maybe don't, I'm going to need to back off on my, my marketing and sales because I'm understaffed. And you're kind of to that point when the, when the phone rings in the morning and it's uh, Mrs. Jones and she says that, uh, you know, I need you uh, not to come clean my home today because, you know, fill in the blank. You go, boy, I'm glad that happened. You never want to be in a position when you're glad that a customer skips a job or you uh, decide that, that you uh, want to back off on your marketing. That's a, that's a bad uh, mindset to get in, and it's contagious. And your support staff, people in your office, start thinking that way too. So the way you avoid all that is to shoot to be, be overstaffed. And that kind of creates a sense of urgency where, you know, i got to find more, more revenue. i got to find more jobs on the board because i got people who who don't have <clears throat> full days. Um, Derek introduced this in a, uh, the last uh, presentation we, we did uh, Thursday at 3 o'clock. This is the uh, Foundation Success Process Flow. If you break down the house cleaning business into uh, some of its simplest uh, levels, basically this is, this is what it takes to, uh, to clean homes. We got uh, these processes up here at the top, and all of this is about recruiting, uh, hiring, and training uh, your, 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 your staff, your, your, your cleaning technicians. We call this the, uh, the recruiting pipeline. You've got to uh, continuously be doing this in order to have people to clean homes. Down here, this is your sales pipeline, where you do your marketing, your advertising, your sales, and, and, and customer relation activities. So at the simplest level, you got to find people who want to clean homes, and you got to find homes that want to be cleaned, and you take those and you schedule, dispatch, and clean. Yeah, really simple. So that's uh, the overall, uh, you know, what a, what, a, what a cleaning business looks like. Today we're going to be emphasizing uh, these processes up here on the, um, the the recruiting pipeline side. Um, Recruiting pipeline, uh, actually, as we saw in the previous model, can be broken down into uh, three components. You've got to attract people. You've got to find some way to get uh, potential job candidates to engage with you. Um, 
once you do that, you need to go through a whole process of, of assessing to see if these people who might have an interest in working with you are indeed qualified candidates. And once you do that, then uh, you actually wind up hiring some of those people, and then there's a whole other process on the training side. Um, we use this model. This is something that, that, that we do in foundations to illustrate that if I know my target number for what I'm recruiting for, say I, I know that I'm going to need two new technicians, say, a month out, and you see this number two down here, and if I've got all the other processes in place, I know that maybe I need to run 30 Craigslist ads and look for three employee referrals and look for two more people from Department of Labor, maybe shoot for five walk-ins. And there's all kinds of things I do from a marketing and advertising standpoint in order to make that happen to get 40 people to, to uh, inquire about a job with me. And once I get those 40 people, I go through a whole process of phone interviews, personal interviews, reference checks, background checks, uh, behavior and, and attitudinal uh, evaluations just to maybe find four people. Each one of those steps, people fall out of the, out of the uh, selection process. So say I'll hire four people, and then once I get into training, I actually would do working interviews. This is something that we, we, we teach in foundations where um, just because you, you hire somebody, you really don't know what you have, but if you, uh, and, and, and then you up front as part of the uh, training, put them through some exercises, people will kind of self-select and, 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 and fall out of the program. So maybe if you're lucky, you know, 30 days down, you had 40 people that were interested, maybe you have two, uh, two legitimate cleaning technicians. So this is kind of, uh, I guess, a more detailed example of how these three processes work from finding candidates down to um, actually having legitimate uh, cleaning technicians ready to go out and uh, clean homes and generate revenue. So what do we, what do we actually want to do uh, from a recruiting standpoint? There's all kinds of um, you know, ways that, that, that you can, can recruit. You know, you've got your incumbent workforce and there's all kinds of programs that, that uh, we uh, use to um, incent our, our incumbent workforce to, to recruit for us. Um, Craigslist, uh, I guess, has, has, has become uh, a cornerstone of most companies' uh, recruiting efforts. Uh, some markets are still free. Charleston's small enough that we can use Craigslist, and it doesn't, doesn't, uh, we don't, don't pay for those. Other markets, there's a fee, but it's uh, still rather modest compared to what uh, newspaper advertising uh, used to, classified ads used to look like, say, maybe a dozen years ago. Facebook is a viable recruiting tool, and you can boost those to uh, those posts to uh, get get more visibility. Use your Facebook uh, groups and boards, community bulletin boards, work uh, all kinds of uh, local establishments, churches, uh, college career centers, unemployment office. A lot of uh, platforms out there that for a fee that, that you can can use as well care.com indeed uh, that's a indeed's a platform that, that, that we use with a fair amount of success um, you can uh, do your own uh, stuff out on AdWords even from, from a recruiting standpoint a lot of a lot of things that, that you can do um, it's important to, to, to measure your your results when, when you're recruiting uh, because all these different mechanisms that you can use, all these different channels, they're going to work for you in different ways. It's a combination of channels and it's also a combination of, of the message, the value proposition. When you're, when you're recruiting and doing your, your posting your ads, you need to design ads in a way that, that are selling your company. This is very much as uh, looks like selling as when you're, 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 you're trying to uh, do your advertising for, for, for clients. So. Uh, why do people want to work for you? And your ads need to, to, to explain that in a way. It's not an opportunity for you to put a job description in there where you're putting all the nitnoid details of, you know, you need to be able to lift 25 pounds and so on and so forth. That's, that comes later down the road. At this point, you just want to, to, to get people to engage with you. Once you find people that, that are qualified candidates, and then you can start weeding them out. But if you can't peop, get people to to at least initially engage with you and express an interest, you you, you really don't don't have much of an opportunity to to make that work. 
um, you want to use multiple channels, uh, like if you're doing Craigslist advertising, especially if um, you're in a market where it's free, you want to be running your ads not only under general labor, you want to be running it under hospitality, you want to run it under food service, you want to run it under retail, you want to run it under gigs, you want to run it under all the different headings where there might be people that uh, might not even consider getting into the, you know, the house cleaning industry, they might be looking for a job doing something else, but if your ad is crafted right, Say so you might run something under uh, food service that says no nights, no weekends. And it's like, you know what, I'm really tired of, of waiting tables and not having my weekend nights available. I think I'm going to you know, give a look to this housekeeping thing. Another thing that you can do is to kind of craft ads to re recruit for positions that maybe you don't even have as great a need for from time to time. We'll pick up uh, our recruiting for, say, customer service reps and, and, and receptionists. Uh, typically, we find that there's a, a, a greater interest in, in setting in an office behind a desk answering the phone than it is going out being, being a cleaning technician. But we go through those uh, resumes, and oftentimes we find people wanting to be a receptionist that have done professional cleaning in the past. We'll reach out and say, you know what? don't really have an immediate need for a receptionist position, but I see you've done cleaning in the past. Let me tell you a little bit more about castle keepers. Would you be interested in that position? Surprisingly enough, oftentimes they'll say, yeah, that sounds pretty cool. I'll come in and talk to you about it. So there's a lot of different ways that you can use medium, message, measure your results in order to make sure that you're maximizing your return off of investment and effort on, on your, your recruiting side. The other thing I want to say about recruiting is that is a perpetual, constant process. Too often times we confuse the activity of recruiting with the activity of hiring, and they are completely different things. Um, we are always recruiting at Castle Keepers, and we teach this in foundations, that regardless of how many people you have, and even if you're to that point where you're overstaffed by a couple of people, which is where you want to be, you're still recruiting because if you've done this for a while, you know things can happen quickly. And you might be overstaffed this week, and you might be back to being understaffed next week. If you haven't been recruiting, you've got no one in that recruiting pipeline. Going back a couple of slides where we showed how you take somebody who's uh, responded to a classified ad and take them all the way down to you know their their qualified you know technician. It takes time for all those steps to, 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 to look at applications and do phone interviews and in-person interviews and background checks and then training. So if you're not recruiting, you're going to lose time, days if not weeks, just getting people in the pipeline to the point where you can hire somebody if you have an immediate need. So if you're always recruiting, you, you, you know, can greatly uh, reduce the time it takes to bring on, to onboard somebody new. And it gives you more leverage. You know, if you don't have that in place and you get yourself in a situation where, especially if your workforce understands that, that you might be understaffed, the whole tenor of uh, the relationship can change. People tend to follow procedures a little bit better, tend to um, arguably try a little bit harder if they know that you've got other options, whereas they feel like, you know, I can kind of get away with doing less because you know, they can't really do anything because, you know, they're understaffed as it is. So for all those reasons, you want to continuously be recruiting. Um, you want to go ahead and, and, and do some, some, some screening um, before you get too deep into the process. You don't want to invest a lot of time with, 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 with somebody um, before, before you hire them especially. Um, you want to you know, certain things, and this it depends upon your business model and what you're doing, uh, driver's license. Um, that can be a deal breaker. You know, Castle Keepers, we do two-person teams, we have company cars, we have ratios that we use. Um, our magic number is about 25%. We can accommodate a workforce of um, about 25% people who aren't qualified drivers. doesn't mean that some of them don't necessarily have a driver's license, but their uh, driving history isn't um, up to the level that we would want it to be in order for them to be an authorized driver. So at any point in time, we might be able to accommodate some, some, some people who are, are non-drivers, but if we hit the 
mark of, of non-drivers, we have to cut that off and we're exclusively uh, recruiting drivers at that point. Um, need to be able to get back and forth to work, need to be able to legally you know, work in the U.S. Um, I would hope that we would all agree that you know, in this business where it's a high level of trust and we've got keys to people's homes, that a certain amount of uh, criminal, you know, checking for, for, for past criminal activity is important. And you know, can they, are they available to work the hours that you need them to work? At the same time, there's, uh, there's assessments that, that you can do to test attitudes on supervisory relationships, theft, drug use. Um, there's one particular product that, uh, that we use um, called um, the Orion. It's a relatively inexpensive assessment for, for, for line labor to give you some insight. Um, and we do that for two reasons. We think it actually works, that, 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 that it, it, it prevents us from, from hiring people that, that might not be a good fit. Um, it also gives you a lot of cover if you ever have the misfortune of, say, an alleged theft. And if the question comes up, well, why did you ever hire that person to begin with? And if you can demonstrate um, that you've got all of these safeguards you put in place where you do background checks, you do drug testing, you do this assessment that gives you attitudinal um, you know, perspective if they have any you know, propensity for, for, for theft. And you add all of that up, it gives you cover if something bad happens, and even if it becomes a matter of litigation. It's like I'm doing everything that I can reasonably do to minimize the chance that this happens. Plus, it's something you can use from a sales perspective. When you're meeting potentially new clients and they want to know, you know what makes you a better uh, option and some of their other options, um, you can talk about all of the things you do to ensure that you have a quality workforce that uh, they can trust in their home. And that would be something else that you could, could add as, as, as well. Um, another thing that, that we believe a lot in and talk about um, in our foundations program and actually show you in, in, in some detail how to do is put together a, a structured interview. Um, oftentimes when we're interviewing people, um, the natural inclination is just to sit down and have a conversation with them. And hey, how are you doing? What, you know, what, what kind of work you want to do? Tell me about what you've done in the past. You might be sitting there with their application or their resume, and basically you're just reading their resume with them and basically asking them to talk about what's on their resume. And that's pretty easy because if it's your resume, you know, if it's your resume, you should be able to speak to that. And it really doesn't give you any more insight or much insight about that individual and what you already have on the paper in front of you. Um, more importantly, um, oftentimes you are prone to bias and you wind up hiring people that you like rather than people that are necessarily the best fit for you. So a structured interview technique keeps you, uh, keeps you, keeps you away from, from uh, some of those pitfalls where you have uh, questions and you ask the same questions of every job candidate and there are ways of you, you score the answers. Um, if uh, they give a really, really good score, they might get five points. If they give you a so-so score answer, rather they get three points. If they give you um, a, a, an answer that that really isn't a good answer, they might not get any points. And you can add it up. And at the end of the uh, interview, there's an objective score that gives you some insight that what's them what what they are about. The really cool thing that you can do with a structured interview technique is to base them on your core values, where if you're looking for, if you say that I'm looking for, for people that are reliable or for people that are uh, empathetic, uh, for example, um, this is a book that, that is really, really good and it's helpful as, as well that you might want to look at. It's called the EQ Interview and it gives you a bunch of core values and example questions that you can ask as that would give you insight if, if that individual has those core values, shares those beliefs, is about the same thing that you want people uh, working in your company to, to, to believe in. And it's uh, Adele Lynn writes it, and it's got like over 250 questions in it. And um, we've used it here, and we, we use this from a, some of the examples that we use in, in foundations as well. So if you want to write interviews based on your core values, I guess that begs the question, well, what are core values, and how, you know, how do we figure out what they are? Well, you really need to know what 
you want your company to stand for when it really gets down to, to, to the owner of the business and why are you in business and what is it that you're hoping to accomplish and you want to build a team of people that share your values. And um, Liz Trotter has uh, developed uh, this, this, this product, which is really pretty cool, core value cards. And um, it looks like a deck of playing cards, uh, but each card has different core values on it. She's got a couple of different decks, and they uh, have different core values on them. But basically, there's a number of exercises you can go through uh, with these cards that will help you whittle down your core values to to a manageable number, say five, give or take uh, one or two on either side. And based on that, you can develop your um, behavioral interview. Uh, questions and, 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 and get an interview together that you can score objectively and, and, and higher to, to, to your core values. And you actually use these cards as part of the interview uh, process as, as, as well. And, 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 and we do that, do that here in Castle Keepers. So once you hire uh, the most appropriate person, the most qualified candidate, using all of the tools and techniques because you've had a, a bunch of people to recruit. This is something that, that I don't think I, I mentioned, but oftentimes it's purely a numbers game. And you wind up hiring people that you really, really don't want to hire or don't really feel great about, but you do it because you, you feel like you don't have any other choice because you don't have any other options. So it's a numbers game at the top. If you're able to recruit well, and, and that's the part of that is recruiting consistently, you have numbers, so you have options, you have choices, and you don't find yourself backed in the corner where you're having to pick between bad choices. You might have to interview 10 people to find one person that you think, think is a good fit. So if you only have two people to interview, the odds are pretty good that you're going to wind up hiring somebody that you really don't want to be hiring and really shouldn't be hiring. So um, my friend Mel Kleiman, who um, is going to be speaking at the um, Workforce Innovation Summit this year at the convention in a couple of weeks, uh, talks about casting a really big net. The whole key to this, or one of the starting points with this, is casting a really big net and recruiting in a way where you got a lot of people to choose from. And you do that, you got a much better opportunity to pick the right people. And once you make that grade higher, your next challenge is to figure out what do you do with them to make that great hire great employee? Um, it starts with training. Um, you need to, to, to make sure you have a good training program and, and, and somebody who um, knows how to train and, and you know, practice makes perfect in, in, in that regard. And Training is about new hires. It's about your, your orientees. We're going to talk a little bit about, about orientation here in a second, but it's also about training incumbents. It's ongoing training. It's uh, something that, that's just kind of like recruiting. You always want to be training as well. Um, Liz kind of kind of talks about the idea that that if you have a problem with with with, with a, a new hire, if it doesn't work out with them, and if it happens within the first three months of of them being with your organization, it could be one for a number. It could be for a number of reasons, but uh, more times than not, it's because there was some breakdown in the in, in, in the training process. Um, the next step in, in in the whole process of of taking your new hires and leading them in a direction where they're going to be long term uh, productive employees is is the engagement component, and you know that really a lot of that really comes down to. Uh, feeling, you know, like um, they don't feel like you care. Um, you need to demonstrate and do things from a leadership perspective to, to get your employees engaged and to, to get them to believe that, 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 that they're, they're valuable to, to the organization, they're valuable to you, then, then you care about them. And if you lose somebody, say, from four to six months out, you know, I guess it's uh, Liz's experience, and, and, and she has programs within uh, foundations that she'll, she talks a lot more about the idea that uh, you, you, you had a breakdown in the engagement component. Going from seven to nine months out of somebody working in your organization, if they get to the point where they leave, say, say eight months into to being employed with you, um, again, it can be for a number of reasons. A lot of times people leave for reasons beyond control. These are controllable reasons that they leave because you know, they have a significant other that's moving halfway across the country, you wouldn't attribute to any of these things. But if, if they leave because they really didn't want to work there anymore, oftentimes 
if it's like uh, between six and nine months, it's because they didn't really feel like there was any opportunity for them. Liz calls these the ad ad ops that, okay, well, great, I've been here for six months, I've hit a plateau, where am I going from here? I don't really see that there's any way that I can advance and, and, and grow here. Um, the next step in this is kind of like getting out from 10 months to a year. It's about the meaning component. It's about, you know, I'm really not in alignment with the core values of what these guys are about. And um, if you do a good job on the, on the interview process and, and have a behavior-based interview technique and know what your core values are, hopefully you minimize the uh, number of people you, 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 you lose for, for that. But if you make it to that point, that person might be here a mere year or more. And uh, the turnover rate, at least our experience, for people who have been here for a year or more is a whole lot lower. Uh, most of your turnover is going to start within the first three months, which is kind of cool because if it's attributed to training, that's something that you can really do something about. you just got to really develop a better training program and, and, and execute a better, better training program. People leave after a year. A lot of times, it's something that's a little more abstract. You know, it's it's a systems problem that um, you know it, the, the 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 processes, the way that 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 you're running your business aren't necessarily uh, a fit to them, and maybe they've tolerated it for a while and tried maybe have even tried to initiate some change within the business, but haven't been effective in, in, in getting your ear or the, or the right party's uh, attention to deal something with. And occasionally, you'll wind up losing somebody who's been with you for years just because, hey, I've been doing this for a while and you know, there's some things that I don't like and I just, just want to wanna, wanna try to, to, to do something different. Um, you know, starting pay usually is not a reason for somebody to leave. Occasionally, you know, somebody will leave because they got a better opportunity to make it more money somewhere else. Money is important from the recruiting standpoint. Getting somebody to respond to an ad, um, you know, pay oftentimes has something to do with it. But once they make the decision that they're going to work with you, pay usually goes way down the list of why somebody would leave you. It's usually some of these other factors of, of environment, recognition, engagement, um, of appreciation. Um, the benefits, vacation, things like that usually really doesn't doesn't add up a lot on the retention side. It has a lot more to do with with recruiting and getting somebody to take the job. But once they take the job, if you lose them, again, it's uh, usually for 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 one of these other other reasons. Um, and things that uh, that will you know make people leave. Um, you don't want to have an environment where you're waiting for people to come to you for if, if they have a problem. You want to reach out and be proactive and make sure that that you're you're taking the temperature of your people. Your leadership team is doing that. You might not be doing all this yourself depending on your organization. You might have a leadership staff in place. And again, this is kind of uh, something that, that's in, in Liz's wheelhouse and she does a really good job of, of, of teaching what this is about, what these techniques are. But um, it makes sense if you think about it on the employ on, on the client side. You don't um, just wait for your, your 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 customers to to complain to you to find out that they have a problem. Most companies will do uh, surveys. They'll call their customers and see if they were satisfied with with the last job. Um, there's online tools out there. Customer thermometer is one that comes to mind. And there's other automated techniques as well that through email and, 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 and digital techniques, you can constantly be trying to, to monitor you know, if your clients are, are happy with your business. You want to be doing the same thing with your workforce, with, with your employees. And if you're just sitting back thinking that, you know, well, if there's a problem, somebody will come complain to me. If not, everything's fine. It doesn't, doesn't really work that way at all. You want, you want to be proactive. You want to make sure that you are actively address conflicts and gossip. You don't want to skirt the issue. You don't want to put your head in the sand and, and just think, well, you know, maybe if I don't say anything, it'll go away. I mean, that's uh, where leadership is really, really important. Whenever issues like that pop up, that can, can, can tear your workforce apart and create a lot of problems and uh, can be directly attributed to, to, to higher turnover. So you, you, you gotta got to deal with that. There's, Again, that's a list thing. She uh, she's very good at uh, doing that and teaching other people how to do that. 
um, you want to make sure that everybody clearly understands uh, what positions are in the organization, what the requirements to have those positions are, how you can grow in the organization, and what I need to do as a new hire or you know, employee at any level to, to grow within the organization. You don't want it to be a mystery as to what do I need to do to get a promotion or a raise around here. I need to commit that to paper and you need to speak to it. And it's part of your orientation program. It needs to be part of your ongoing uh, training program for incumbents. Um, and this is a process like everything else. You can have uh, good practices uh, in place. You're, you're, these processes can be working well today and and in time, um, they, they, they become dated. They don't work as well. So you need to constantly be uh, reviewing what you're doing in this regard in terms of, of engaging and creating a, uh, uh, a caring workforce. Um, group activities, a group orientation is, is, is important. Even if you do solos, we think it's important to try to get you know at least two people or more in an orientation program because as much can be learned by new hires interacting within each other and creating some uh, level of bonding camaraderie and just comfort it takes uh, some of the pressure off if I'm going through orientation with, with, with more you know with more than just just myself same thing with, with, with training don't confuse orientation orientation with training. Orientation is policy, procedures, core values, history, who we are and what we are and why we're here and what we expect of you and what you need to expect of us and kind of setting the stage to make sure that they understand everything that they need to understand to be successful and, and comfortable and, and happy within, within your company. Uh, the training, um, I guess there's a lot of different dimensions of that. I, you know, it can be classroom, it can be techniques, it can be um, hands-on. A lot of that has to do with how do you remove soil from a surface. Uh, you want to do that in a way where there's expectations, there, there's deliverables, there's outcomes where we expect you to be able to, 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 be able to, to clean this room and be able to do it toward to this scope of work and it should take this amount of time and we're going to show you and we're going to let you show us and then we're going to make any corrections we need to make and then you're going to do it and we're going to time you and we're going to come in and we're going to measure uh, you know, did you actually address everything that's on our, 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 our checklist. Uh, you don't want your training just to be loose and, 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 and non-structured. Everything that we're doing here, there's, there's uh, there's a expectation that somebody's learning something and, and you're expecting them to demonstrate to you that, that, that they've learned it. People learn a whole lot better if they know that they're going to have to take a, uh, a written quiz or written test or demonstrate through practical application that, that they understand and have the ability to do what it is that you want them to do. Okay, going to take a break here for just a second. We're going to do a poll. Cece, do you want to uh, execute a poll for us to help uh, identify who on the call has an open door policy? Absolutely, Tom. Thank you. And I've got the poll up. So if you are on your uh, tablet or your phone or your computer, you should be able to check yes or no. Do you have an open door policy? And we've got, we've got votes coming in. We've got about... Uh, 35% of folks on the call have voted up to 40. Ooh, up to 60. So far, yeses are winning. 87% voted. I would love to hit 100% voted. That would be, that would just make my day. All right. Have it moved in a, a couple of seconds, so we'll, we'll, we're going to go ahead and close this poll. Um, let's see. We'll close it and share it. You can see 95% of folks said yes, they have an open door policy. 5% of those voting said no. So, Tom, what, what do we have on this? Wow. Um, in the previous slide, we, we, we talked about that, that you want to be proactive, that you want to be engaging with your, your, your workforce to find out what problems, concerns, ideas, suggestions, opportunities they may have identified for you. And 
Um, open door policy, gee, I don't know. I've been in the workforce for a while. I remember back when I had a real job back in the 80s. The big thing was open door policy. You're always welcome to come in and, and, and talk to the boss. And you know, the, 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 the underlying premise behind that is, well, the boss is not going to get out from behind his or her desk to come talk to you. So they really don't care and you go you can go to their office and tell them your problem but they really don't want to hear it and um, open door policy is better than no policy at all I guess but a much better policy to have is a proactive policy where the boss is going out and actively soliciting feedback ideas suggestions from your your workforce your team rather than expecting them to to come to you because for everyone that does, there's a dozen that won't, and for all the reasons that, that we just, just talked about. And here's kind of a cartoon that we uh, put together that uh, CC found. Um, I'm so glad our boss has an open door policy, and it's like that door is just kind of jumping out of an airplane. It doesn't seem like it's a very um, exciting uh, opportunity. It doesn't seem like something that, I, that I'd want to do, and most logical employees wouldn't want to do that either. So um, try to have a policy where, where, where you and your leadership teams were actively uh, going out and soliciting the feedback that otherwise you would, would hope to get with an open door policy. You'll get a lot more feedback if you go out and, and, and ask the question. Um, let's talk about team building for a little bit. Um, team building exercises are, are um, really a great way to not only you know, build teamwork and to learn a lot more about where the temperature of your workforce is and to help uh, get ahead of any problems, concerns that, that individuals within uh, your, your workforce might have before it leads to uh, bad performance, disengagement, and, and, and them leaving your organization. Um, Another thing that, that, that team building exercises can do is when you take a handful of people and put them together in an exercise where they need to work together as a team, typically a team needs a leader and you, you wouldn't necessarily identify that leader. Uh, natural process of, 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 of teams, uh, the leader usually uh, self-selects and kind of evolves to the top and if you do that and observe, a lot of times you can learn a heck of a lot about your cleaning technicians in terms of who's got good communication skills, who's able to actually be effective in a team environment, and who can actually lead a team. And that can become very useful when um, opportunities pop up where, where you need additional leadership in your support staff roles. Uh, having used uh, team building exercises can, can help you uh, already have uh, your short list together as to, to who um, is the most qualified candidate for, for, for growth position. Um, through Cleaning Business Builders, we, we have packages of, of team builder exercises. It's a 12-pack of um, exercises that you can do with your workforce to uh, help them uh, work on projects, go through exercises to um, you know, build the camaraderie and also uh, you know, give them an opportunity to develop uh, communication and leadership skills and identify who your next leaders would be. And you can get those through uh, cleaningbusinessbuilders.com right off our store. Um, you can order it from our storefront there. Another thing you can order from our storefront is the core value cards. We talked about those um, earlier, a lot of different exercises that, that, that you can do, do with them. Um, and you know, by knowing your core values, it gives you an opportunity to live your core values. It's like anything else. You can have policies and procedures, and if they're in a three-ring binder on some shelf somewhere collecting dust, they're not going to help you any. Same with your core values. You need to use uh, any, every meeting opportunity you have with your workforce to emphasize your core values, your, your marketing material, your website, the way you answer your telephone. Um, there's, everything about your business needs to, 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 to speak to your core values and that's uh, as much reinforcing what they are with your workforce. It's one thing to say it, it's another thing to do it and um, it's not so much about what we say, it's about what we do. So you really need to um, emphasize your, your, your core values and how you, you do your business and 
Again, that's uh, Liz is is one of the best at that. We spend a lot of time in foundations uh, working on on exercises on on how to do that as well. Um, just wrapping up our presentation. Um, you need to get great people, and you know you need to have a recruiting pipeline. You need to be doing it constantly. You need to have a, a cast a large net and have a lot of people uh, to, to to interview and select from. You need to have a really good screening process, so you're selecting the best from the large number of people that you're selecting from. You need to uh, have a scored interview technique, uh, behavior interview technique, and based on questions that that uh, capture your core values and um, you know, you want to do orientations in groups. Once you start hiring, you know, hire someone. You want to make sure that you keep them engaged. Um, team building exercises are, are a great way to do that, and make sure that you're living your core values to continue to emphasize, uh, you know, what you're about and why you hired them over all the other people that you didn't hire uh, to, to begin with. So that being said, I guess we're uh, to the to the end of our, our, our formal uh, presentation. Um, I guess we got a few minutes. We could do questions if if we have any. Do we have any questions, Cece? We do indeed, Tom. Thank you for asking. Um, we've had a couple come in through uh, through the webinar, so I'm going to back up to the earlier questions first. Uh, you were talking about. Um, uh, opportunities for mo promotion. Can you give us some ideas? This question is from Jim Jones. Um, of what uh, what are some things you can do to create opportunities for your technicians to grow into trainer positions and do sales and estimator positions? What are the things that you can do? So you would already have a table of organization. You'd have these positions available. Um, that's that's a good that's a good question. Um, team building exercise is is really kind of a a low risk low cost way to start identifying who's got uh, some natural ability, some aptitude, and, and would, would would have the potential. Uh, once you once you come up with that short list, um, a lot of times it's hard to for for a lot of reasons to take somebody that is a is a cleaning technician and to put them into a full time role where maybe they're doing inspections or a supervisor or a customer service rep. Um, you, you might not have a full-time need, for example. Likewise, um, you might not have the cash flow where you can afford to hire a full-time equivalent to do some of those things. Um, we look for opportunities to do what we call additions, where if we have people that we think that we have at, that have aptitude, have p potential, we'll pick a day here and there. and and pull them in and uh, oftentimes we do it in a way where we aren't setting the expectation of you know you're you know you hi you just got a promotion because then if they have to go out and clean a home the next day they're not they're, you know that's kind of a consolation prize they're not going to feel good about that <clears throat> what we do is to say that you know we've, we've observed you you're really good you've got you know we think that you can can, can grow in a lot of different ways and um, just for today, could you help us in the office? I need somebody to cover the phones. I'm, I'm short a person. Or um, I need you to help me inspect some homes today. Maybe you could go out with an inspector and kind of kind of train with them. And you just kind of pick your opportunities to do it on a um, on a on an ads needed basis, on a on a, on a, on a part time basis. And if they wind up demonstrating that that they are the person they need to be, and they're learning by on the job training at that point. You can kind of grow them into to, um, the position, and if your cash flow uh, and business needs, uh, you know, dictate that 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 you have a full-time position for somebody performing that activity, you've kind of groomed them for it, and it really is 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 an easy move to make at that point. Yeah, the, there's so much to the the question of, of promotions and and structure. Um, I regret that we don't have more time today to, to dig into that. We do have a, quite a few questions. Uh, Tina and Julie, Tina Quick and Julie Vincent, both are asking a very similar question. If you are hiring part-timers in particular to keep yourself overstaffed and give yourself that flexibility, what are some things you can do to make sure that, uh, that their uh, schedule is full and growing, particularly if they want to become full-time? Well, 
that's more of a, a sales and marketing exercise. I mean, the, it, if, for, for starters, if you've got more labor than you've got uh, jobs, then you need you know to go out and work on your your advertising and sales and take the leads you have and do a better job of closing and all of that. And that's a whole other discussion. Um, oftentimes, we find that, that people that are part-time self-select and they want to be part-time, that the idea of working 40 hours a week is something that really isn't part of the consideration set anyway. Um, if they do want to be working full time and all you have is part time, then you 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 build and as you get new clients, uh, it, add, it adds to their book and 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 they get there over over time. Um, every day is a little bit different, even if you know you you already are full time in terms of the revenue that you have, in terms of the amount of hours you have, in terms of the amount of money you're making anyway. It's typically is a is a, is, a, is a constant day to day, and um, as you're adding new teams, a lot of times one of the things that you would do, and we teach this in foundations with uh, our scheduling and production planning uh, modules, that you can realign work from some of the other teams in a way where if you take a home or two from from uh, a number of different teams, it really doesn't impact their workload or their revenue that much. Oftentimes it goes unnoticed and you're able to add that to your new team. You're doing it in a way where you're looking at logistics and travel time and, 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 and travel distance where you're also creating, it's an opportunity to create more efficiency where the amount of time that all your people are spending on the clock uh, as a ratio to the amount of time they're actually spending in the home is, is, is getting, getting better. So you realign your, uh, your, your, your schedule, you move some things around, you, you add new customers to uh, the, the folks who, who need more work by emphasizing your sales exercise. Combination of things. Yep, it's always going to be a combination of things. Nothing's easy, I think that's what, uh, what, what one of the main things. Uh, we, we would love for this to be an easy industry to work, easy to run a business in general, but uh, you got to keep a lot of balls in the air at all times, and that's uh, even more so when, when you're working with a, um, a staff-heavy kind of industry like the, the cleaning industry. Tom, I know you've got some additional announcements you want to make about some opportunities to, uh, to stay in touch over the next couple of weeks, particularly convention. Um, so yeah, we've got a got another quick poll coming up here. We want to know who's coming to convention. All right, so the poll's up, and let's see. I love watching the poll. We just started playing with the poll feature here, and it, it helps so much to get feedback so we know kind of where, <laughs> where to take our conversations, what you need to know. So on our webinar, we've got 78% people voting predominantly. Most people on the webinar today will not be in Las Vegas to see us. That's kind of sad. I'm disappointed. Oh, well, Tom's got some announcements that I think are going to show you a little bit of what you're missing and how you're but still how you can keep in touch. Yeah, if you, if you don't plan on going but have the opportunity to, um, you might want to reconsider. I mean, it's uh, really a great opportunity to network and to, to learn uh, just new ideas that you can bring back to, to your business. And um, it's an investment, honestly. That I, I just can't imagine that 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 over the course of of you know the 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 weeks months you know after after going to convention that you wouldn't come back with with, with ideas that you could actually uh, hang a dollar amount on on the the things that you would be able to do in your business that 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 uh, you wouldn't have done if it hadn't been for what you were exposed to at convention. There's going to be an all day. Um, I guess a summit, if you will, focused on workforce innovation. A lot of uh, 
things are happening out there. You know, I mean, technology is changing, demographics are changing, uh, laws are changing. Uh, what's an employee? What's an independent contractor? Uh, what uh, do you need to put together a, a, a productive workforce? The whole day is going to have speakers lined up talking about uh, workforce innovation ideas and how to. It kind of ties into what we just uh, talked about here today, in part. Um, we're going to be doing some private consulting, uh, myself along with Liz and Derek um, through Cleaning Business Builders. We uh, have uh, some, some time set aside to do some, some free one-on-one -on -one, uh, coaching and you can go to uh, cleaningbusinessbuilders.com and there's still a CCA. Do, do we have any time slots still available? Tom, I think you have one left. Liz has, um, she might have five, it's either four or five, and Derek's got about the same number, so the schedule is, is just about closed uh, for all of you. I'm getting really tight. If you're going to, if, you, if you're going to be going to a convention, we'd like to spend a little more time with, with any one of us, uh, that's a, a free opportunity to do so. We encourage you to take uh, advantage of that. Um, Derek's going to be doing a tour for, for first timers of, at the uh, convention, kind of going around the trade uh, show floor, um, going, by, going by just kind of explaining how to get the most value out, out, out of the experience and to uh, introduce you to uh, some of the uh, vendors there that uh, would, would probably be of most, most interest to you. He's going to be doing that Wednesday at 1 o'clock. We're going to be meeting at the... Uh, Cleaning Business Today booth. That's booth number 3296. So first time at the convention. This is um, really a, a, a great uh, way to kind of get your feet wet with that. Um, we're going to be doing uh, some other special sessions on employees while we're out in Vegas. Uh, Liz is going to be doing a program on culture. She's going to be doing this. This is part of the ISSA. Uh, uh, speaker series. She's going to be at the Education Arena on the trade show for Thursday at noon. Um, Derek's going to be um, doing a presentation Friday at 10 o'clock in the, in the same arena on um, retention. Liz is going to be speaking on culture. Uh, Derek's going to be talking about, uh, about retention. Both of those uh, very tightly tie into our discussion where we, we, we had today. So again, if you're going to be in a, a convention these are, are, are two presentations that you certainly don't want to miss. And if uh, you don't think that you're going to convention, I would, again, invite you to reconsider because uh, it's this information along with uh, seeing uh, all the, the new innovations on the, on the um, tools and, and, and technology side and the networking and the ideas you get from all of that. It's, uh, it's well worth the investment. Um, Clean Business Builders, we're going to be doing a couple of uh, classes as well. Um, well, Liz is going to actually be doing an artsy presentation on Wednesday at 11 on, on time management. Um, we're going to be um, doing a exercise with Clean Business Builders. We have a suite over at the uh, hotel that uh, Arxy is members are staying at. and. Um, we're going to be doing a, a presentation there Friday morning on how to use KPIs to uh, as, as as a way to to do planning for for, for your business. That uh, I guess we have some uh, a capacity limit on that. So if you're going to be there and want to attend that, uh, what is the what is the way to sign up for that CC? For that through our website. Uh, we we don't have the RSVP up yet. We'll have that up the uh, the beginning of the week. Um, of convention on the 19th. Okay. Um, we're having a drawing at our at the Cleaning Business Today booth. Uh, again, that's uh, 3296. It's going to be Thursday at 4 o'clock. We're going to have about $1,000 worth of uh, prizes that we're going to be giving away uh, there at uh, 4.30 is when the raffle is going to be. Um, public transportation, uh, the monorail is uh, really a cool way to get around. Um, if you've uh, ever been to Vegas and done that before, it uh, certainly beats a lot of the ground transportation options. And 
ISSA has this really, really neat app that uh, Cece was showing me the other day that you want to uh, definitely put on your smartphone if you're going to be there that helps you plan out how you're going to use your time, who, what vendors you want to see, gives you all of the uh, speaking, uh, all, the, all the presentations and the times. It's uh, you know, a must-have if you're, you're, you're going to be there, get a lot more value out of the experience. Um, we're going to be uh, using Periscope. Uh, CC is going to be doing some broadcasts uh, throughout the week. So you want to go ahead and, um, I guess, um, like, sign up, uh, hook up with us on Periscope at Cleaning Biz Today. And uh, whenever we do a live broadcast, your um, phone will uh, bark at you and let you know that uh, something cool is happening. You can just watch it on your smartphone. And if you're not going to be there, this is, uh, I guess, Cece, wouldn't you say this is the next best thing to being there? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, there, there hasn't been a, a live broadcast from convention before, to my knowledge. And this is not a formal official thing. We're, we're going to be catching the snippets as we're able, um, because we just decided to, to give this a shot yesterday, so we're still working on permissions. Um, but we're going to try uh, to to get you in, in the the backstage, you know, the ARCSI uh, uh, hospitality suite, the welcome reception and, and opening, opening remarks, usually at the president's reception. There's a, 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 um, a look forward into uh, what's coming in the next year from, from ARCSI. Um, we have business meetings. We have um, uh, lots of presenters that we're going to try to catch up with um, outside of their presentations and, and talk to them, ask them some questions. Um, on Periscope, so you can kind of you can peer in and, and see what what all's going on. Um, and I, I'll, I'll be I'll be shameless here. Listen, you, you need to be at convention. You need to make the effort. This is this is about the best way we can show you what you're really missing. Um, so we'll have that up. And uh, if you'll notice on the screen, you can see some chat bubbles at the bottom of that Periscope screenshot. Uh, if you catch it live, I will be responding live to chat messages that come in while uh, uh, while we're going through a, a particular broadcast. So excited about this. I've got a long list of, of people to talk to and events to catch. So it's going to be pretty cool. It will be. And finally, we're... Clean Business Builders is doing another jumpstart program the end of, uh, I guess, the middle of January, first part of January, January 10th through 16th. Um, for those of you who don't know what uh, jumpstart is, we uh, take uh, cleaning business owners, a uh, handful of cleaning business owners, and we rent a beachfront property on Isle of Palms down here in Charleston for a week. And we, we stay at the, uh, this, the place is called the mansion. It's a 12 bedroom, 12 and a half bath, uh, about 8,000 square foot beachfront home. It's really, uh, well, it's crazy. It's a beautiful place. There's pictures of it on the uh, Cleaning Business Builders website. And uh, it's a week long program. Some of the times here at our office in Castle Keepers, some of the programs we do over at the uh, mansion. Um, still some plenty of time for, for, for fun and, uh, you know, some, some, you know, fun time as well, but a lot of hard work as well. And there's like a six month, uh, follow up program coaching, uh, with, uh, Derek, Liz and myself after that, um, um, there's pre-work that, that, that you'll be doing before you get to, um, before you get to, uh, the mansion in January, um, you know, the, the fee for that is uh, $79.95. Uh, there's a number of different payment options available. If uh, you have something that you're interested in, but, uh, you know, being able to pay for it's a concern, um, reach out, let us know. There's a lot of different ways uh, that we can put a package together to, to help you out with that. Um, any, uh, anything I miss, uh, Cece? No, I think you've covered everything. We haven't had any additional questions come in. Um, we'll let you know. What, you know we'll send you a, an email reminder after the, uh, the webinar um, where you can find the recording if you want to review any of this information that Tom's gone over, any of these ideas. Um, and we're, we'll also send out reminders of what we're doing, uh, where you can find us, and a lot of other opportunities, not just ours, but uh, a lot of great opportunities at convention. Um, if you're on our email list, so uh, keep in touch with that. Pay, you know, 
keep up with what's going on each day. Lots of folks post on Facebook what's going on at convention. So, uh, you know, lot, lots of ways to keep up, and we certainly encourage you to do so if you're not able to join us. Um, so, yep. Now, I was trying to, I was trying to cover cover a silence. Give any any questions, any time to to come in. You can always call us or email us, Facebook me. Um, uh, for, with questions, and we look forward to, to talking with you, Tom. Thank you for uh, for a great uh, a great set. A lot of a lot of uncommon topics and uncommon questions um, about you know hiring and, and keeping great people. So we're trying trying to to break out of the the same old stuff we hear and 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 grab some new ideas to to give some teeth to our programs and make our businesses run better. So thank you for that. Really appreciate it. Well, thank you for everybody for, 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 for taking the time and, and joining us today. I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions after the fact, you can re reach us uh, through, through our website at Cleaning Business Builders. Just uh, drop me an email and you know, we'll, we'll follow up with any questions you have, okay? Absolutely. We certainly look forward to, to doing that. Thank you for joining us, everybody, and uh, we will see you in Las Vegas first and uh, back here third Thursday in November. So keep a watch for your email for the next topic coming up. Thanks for joining us today. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.